Hey, what is up guys? My name is Eric and in the last tutorial, we went over what a function is as well as how to declare one. And we also learned how to create a function of type void, which basically means that the function will not have a return value. And not only that, we also learned that if we were to declare our function outside of the main function, but located below it, we would have to create something called a function prototype, which basically informs the program that later down the line, you'll see a function call and that function call is going to access a function that we've created on our own and to tell the program to not freak out about it. So to solve that issue of not having to type a function prototype every single time you create a new function, all you have to do is to move the function outside of the main function, but put it above the main function, which is shown right here. And we also learned that a function has a return type followed by the name of the function and a pair of parentheses, which could contain parameters. But in the last tutorial, we covered only the simple parts of a function which did not include parameters and the return type was void. So it did not have a return value. So in today's tutorial, like I said again, we're going to cover it with a return type and with parameters. So let's do this. Okay, so to demonstrate the concept of functions with a return type and parameters, what we're going to make today is a simple geometry calculator for circles. So to keep things simple, we're only going to create two more functions besides the main function itself, giving us a grand total of three functions in today's program. So the first function will allow us to calculate the area of a circle. The second function will allow us to calculate the circumference of a circle. So for those of you who don't know, an area of a circle is basically the amount of space inside a circle and then for a circumference it basically means the perimeter of a circle okay so let's do that so because we're messing with area and circumference there's a possibility that the answer could be a decimal number not a whole number so in that case we're not going to be using integer we're going to be using a return type of float so float and then the name of the function for calculating area of a circle we're going to call it calculate area of circle followed by a pair of parentheses, pair of curly brackets, and then inside the parentheses, we're going to pass in a parameter. And that parameter is a number. What type of number? It's going to be the radius of a circle. So at this point, we have the option of assuming the radius is going to be whole numbers all the time, or we could code it so that it's good for most cases, and that is float. By using a float, it will allow us to give decimal values for the radius. So float radius. Now, as a quick refresher for those of you who don't know, the formula to calculate the area of a circle goes like this. Area equals pi times r squared. In other words, it's also known as pi times r times r, where r represents the radius and pi represents 3.14 and then it goes on and on and on. But for this example, we're going to keep pi as 3.14. Okay, so to make things simple for ourselves, we're going to put pi outside here. So let's call it a float pi equals 3.14. Okay, so in this case, let's create a variable called float area of circle. And then we'll give it a value of the area. So area of circle will equal to pi times radius times radius semicolon. So what this does is this represents the area of a circle's formula. So once it calculates the radius values that it receives upon the call of this function inside the main function, it will plug it into this formula and store it into the variable area of a circle. However, because this time we're dealing with a function with a return type of float, we have to include one more line of code and that is return area of circle. Now why? Because area of a circle is a float number and this function is a float return type. So therefore, when we return a value, we have to return a float value, which in this case, it's area of a circle. Okay, so let's create our, actually, let's start being good with our programming. Outside of the function, let's make a comment saying calculates area of a circle. Okay, it's good to comment your code every now and then. The next thing we're going to make is calculates circumference of a circle. Okay, so the next thing we're going to create is the formula for calculating the circumference of a circle. So again, we're going to use float and then let's call it calculate circumference of circle. And then again, let's give it a radius. And then inside, let's I'll leave a comment for your reference. C equals to two pi r and then float circumference 
of circle. Again, we're going to translate our mathematical equation on how to calculate the circumference of a circle into a programming format. So circumference of circle equals, let's see, 2 times pi times radius, semicolon. And then because this has a return type of float and not a void, we will need a return statement. And we're going to return circumference of circle. Now, let's go into our main function and call these values. But before we do that, let's see out some instructions. Please enter a radius. And then let's declare a variable outside right here called float radius. And then you see in the value radius. So that way we're going to ask the user to enter a radius, then he or she is going to enter a radius which will be stored inside the variable called radius inside the main function. And then once we do that, let's call our function called calculate of the area of a circle. Okay, so calculate area of circle. And then inside the parentheses, we pass it the parameters radius semicolon. So that's how you pass parameters into a function. You basically type in the variable that stores the value that it's expecting. And in this case, you have to pass in a float. You could pass in other types depending on the scenario though, but it's best to keep it the same type. Okay, so to pass in the value into a function that you created that requires parameters, simply type in the name of the variable containing the correct data type into the parentheses of your function call statement. Because the function that we're calling has a return type of float, that means once this function gets called in the main function, it'll do all this calculation and it'll throw back the value of area of circle. So think of it like playing catch the ball with a friend of yours, okay? Where you could be like the main function that's calling your friend and then your friend is being the other function. So when you throw the ball, it's like saying, okay, you're calling out to your friend to catch the ball, which is where the ball is kind of like the parameter. And then when your friend returns the ball to you that's equivalent to returning the value from the function and then it's up to you to catch the ball so how are we going to catch the ball we're going to in this case you could just see out the value however you have the option of storing it into a variable but in this case we're not going to store it we're just going to directly see out the result so let's say area colon and then we'll do that add an end line just to make it look nice. And then let's do the same thing again, but this time with the circumference. Calculate circumference. So if we were to run this program, it will do all of the calculations for us after we enter the radius value. Okay, so as you can see, our program asks us for a radius. So in this case, let's say a radius of 10 enter and as you can see it automatically calculates the area which is 314 the circumference is 62.8 notice the decimal because we used a float variable as the return type okay so if we were to take a look at this program and the results we could see that okay so inside the main function it first see out the instructions like what we have been doing in the past few videos and then the user gets the option to see in a value into the radius and then followed by these two lines of code where the first one calls the calculate area of circle function which passes in the radius value so the radius that the user enters gets passed into the calculate area of circle and then inside the function it'll take that value plug it into the formula calculate the area of circle and return it back to the main function and then because we're not storing it in anywhere else in the main function if we don't see out the value we're not going to get any results so if we were to see out it like this it'll display the area of a circle as we see 314 is the return value and the same idea goes with the circumference except the only difference is the formula and the names perfect so as you can see this is one of the benefits of using functions in C++ or just any other programming language in general that supports these type of features. And with all of this in mind, we have now finished our programming lesson on C++ functions. Give yourself a pat on the back because you made a major milestone in C++ programming. Thank you for watching and be sure to leave a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and to subscribe to stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.